Hi, this is Andre with the International Underground Entertainment Magazine, UG Mag Online. We're doing it up with our facilitator, Bonnie Harris, Coach Bonnie Harrison. So Coach Bonnie Harrison, she leads our conversations in hip-hop. Connie, Bonnie, can you say hi to our worldwide listeners? Yes, indeed. Hello, brothers and sisters out there in, in radio land, telephone land, the Internet land. We've got so many different lands now. It's hard to keep up with just where we're at with all this stuff. But uh, welcome to the conversation. Happy to have you. Are people able to hear uh, well? Yes, they are They're able to hear. I can hear you clearly. Okay. It is John right here. Well, I want you to speak to him and ask him that question you posed to me regarding the relationships in hip hop. Oh, oh, oh! All right. Well. Are you are you on the line, John? Hi. Right. Okay. Well, hello. How are John, you, John? Yeah. You're on the line. I'm. I got. Yes, he's on the line. On the line, yeah. Okay. Now I was saying that tonight's conversation is about the life of the partners and children of hip-hop artists. And okay. we're going to be looking at image and security issues and future. But the question becomes one of, um, I know for several weeks we've been having these conversations, and one of the things that keeps coming up is that for many of the hip-hop artists, one of the things that was missing in their lives was consistency with respect to uh, father figures in particular. And, uh, okay. My my question is, if that's the case, then how did um, did hip hop artists uh, learn how to be effective parents? How did they learn, and where did they learn um, how to be um, uh, affectionate and and intimate? I mean, who modeled that behavior for for them? And that goes for the women as well as men who are hip hop artists. Because okay. then the question becomes one of, well, then what is there to be said about the children? And if the lyrics that we hear in the music is real for the artists, then what is their relationship like with their with the women in their lives? Because some of the some of the conversations, some of the references are very negative when it comes to women. So the question becomes one of then how does that get mediated in in terms of the relationship between the artist and their uh, partners and children. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm just I'm the owner of Phoebe's Place, an art cafe, and we we promote young artists who come and read their poetry, and um, that's who I am. So to answer your question, is a little involved right now, but I'm just here to promote. I have a place, I have a platform for young artists who come here and do their poetry. And yes, some of it. Um, of course, about how they talk about women and how they talk about, you know, vice versa. But that's what I'm here for, to promote young artists and the, the platform. Well, in the process of promoting the artists, uh, do you have any kind of conversation with them about the state of affairs of the art now as opposed to um, it's, it's yeah, just, For the longest time, I had mostly um, male poets, and I was always wondering about the female response. It's been very fascinating hearing them back and forth. But I'm really not the one to talk about this right now because I'm really here as a um, club owner and promoter of young talent. So you might want to talk to Andre more about this. Okay. I'm really here just to say hello and welcome you and, well, and thanks for talking to me. But it's really about my um, ca art cafe, Phoebe's Place in Teaneck, where I want to promote young artists on Wednesday evenings for open mic. Okay. I understand that. I just was wondering. Would you want to, talk to, you want, you want to, talk to a young up-and-coming poet who's here every week who has a lot to say about this? Would you want to talk to him? That's that's wonderful, too. It, we we encourage everyone to join the conversation. Okay, let me pass you on. Let me ask Andre if it's okay, because I think he's the one that might be very interesting to talk to, because he's here every week. He's the first one here, the 16-year-old poet. A lot to say about what you're talking about. And might, he might have some interesting answers from a 16-year-old point of view. Would that be interesting? Sure. We have, we have young people on last week that... Um, Okay, hold on. Listening at the different uh, perspectives, sure. Would you be okay if I passed on to Justin? She might yeah, the yeah, person yeah, that she yeah, yeah. I want to pass on to Justin Pines. He's a young poet who's here every week, and I think he'd be very relevant to the question you just asked me. Okay. Okay? 
Justin? Here is Justin Pines. He's a young poet. I think he might be able to. Can you hear me? Sure, I can. Uh huh. Justin Pines, a young poet, is going to talk to you live on the radio. All right. Um, Justin, welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. It's nice to have you on the call tonight. We it's do nice these, to be here. Well, I'm, I'm glad. Tired. I'm glad to know that our young folk are still coming out, spreading the word, and and doing it in in all kinds of different ways. Ways that are um, really powerful and speak to, you know, some of the conversations we that we need to have in our community. So I'm very I happy agree. that you're on the call tonight. Um, one of the things that we'll be talking about has to do with um, the image and uh, relationships of hip-hop artists, for example. And uh-huh. um, Because these, this show is about uh, conversations in hip-hop. And we look at all aspects of the artists' lives. And one of the things we're talking about tonight is looking at the fact that for Many of the artists, there was not a consistent father figure in the household. And one of the things that gets talked about all the time uh, on our uh, conversations and broadcasts is that um, with that father figure not being there, that has uh, has had a negative impact on young men. And mm-hmm. so my question is, if that is the case, and these young men have children and they're in relationships, what is, how does that inform their relationships, um, where did they get role modeling from to be parents? Uh, how did they learn how to be fathers and mothers? Uh, because um, not just males that are hip-hop artists, they're females too. How did they learn how to be affectionate and loving? And where did that, inf- where did that lesson learned come from if it wasn't uh, something that they experienced in the household? I think, like, you find love for your like, you find love with your friends and like you find a father figure where you can like teachers like become mentors and all like am i making sense like all type oh, like you find like, absolutely like family members like male figures in your life i like, like rappers you idolize like rappers you, for me like rappers who rap about topics that I can relate to, or even if I can relate to them. Like, if it feels honest and it feels like they're revealing themselves, you get into it. Mm-hmm. And you, like, it in, it inspires you in a lot of ways, and it helps you helps you with what you're trying to do. So that's where you might get that love and, like, be able to become a father figure. Father, well, not father figure, father to your children. Mm-hmm. Well, if what you're saying is true, then how do we explain if they've had those kinds of images they've had those kinds of role models, then how do you explain the use of some of the language, which is some is a language that is certainly doesn't support what we want for our children and our the elders? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just being influenced by the culture and just wanting to fit in. I personally don't like using that type of language. And in my raps, I definitely don't, like, mm-hmm. use the N-word or call a girl the B-word or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I don't judge someone who does, but I just... Don't it's not for me because I don't like to do that. But I think it's a lot of time them saying things like that is because they want to like be seen as cool or be seen with the culture. Or sometimes it could just be like how the person was like how he just talked because he just hasn't gotten used to it. Mm-hmm. But the, the, back to what you were saying, if there were positive role models. Um, I would I would imagine that these role models would be having some kind of conversation with these younger people about the inappropriateness of the language. Don't you? I agree. I think sometimes, like, sometimes, like, how, like, some older adults will say, it's like, like, they'll, like, they'll give you all this, like, wisdom, and, like, sometimes we just ignore it. True. True. So what then should the community do? Because there's an outcry in the community about the language and the imagery, and how it negates um, so much of the work that's been done in terms of freedom for us, for women, uh, and also for the type of uh, image we want our men to have. So what do we do mm. about that? That is a good question about that. That's a politician answer, isn't it? 
that is a very good question that you brought up. Um, I, I'm, that is, I'm not really sure of the answer, but, um, I think you should, like, look into yourself and first and, like, analyze what that does. Like, the person who's saying that should probably look into themselves and see what that does to people people and if they want to keep saying it. Someone uh, last week, I think it was, um, um, and and in other conversations, the the, um, opinion has been of some people that um, hip-hop is is an art form and that uh, artists should be able to express themselves any way they want to, and and they think that to have a conversation about doing anything about the language is a conversation is is really censorship. So then, what do you think about that? I think hip hop is an art form, and it's like, and I I personally hate censorship, but I I think like if it if the story like calls for like using the word, then I'm not going to say I would not use the word, but I wouldn't just use the word just to be like, hey, I can use the word. Mm-hmm. But I like I. Hey, censorship, and I'm sure it's got me in trouble a lot of times. Censorship, but I agree that like freedom of speech and all that. Well, I think censorship is is not something that um, it's certainly not something that I support. And at the same time, I support where for for me, it's important for me to have a responsibility to my community and to young people. So there are certain things I just cannot do and say, even if I want to. Um, because I think that what happens to younger people and what happens to our people is bigger than the issue of freedom of speech when it comes to uh, uh, rapping and expressing a social situation with a certain type of language when you could express it differently. And one of the things that came out in the conversations was some of the young people don't know anything that's different. This This is normal for them. They don't. I, they don't see this as being. There's anything wrong with the, the conversation calling women the b word or the, uh, other black men the n word. Uh, they don't. They don't see anything um, negative about it or destructive about it or counterproductive about it. They just don't. I I think that's sad if they don't think that. It's very sad. Like, but if you do, you, have you ever listened to some conversations from some of the younger people about where they're at with that with with the language? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty much like the typical. It's like they, it's pretty much how you typically would imagine it. it like they don't like have some type of revelation and say, "I'm not going to say it anymore." <laughs> All right. Well, you certainly are uh, a joy. I would like to tell you that, and I tell Thanks. people all the time when they are sort of uh, really uh, ragging out younger people. I says, "You know, you really. I think one of the things that divides us." is older people have a tendency to think they just know everything, you know, and uh, don't see the value in what younger people have to say sometimes, and and sometimes um, are not willing to listen. And I think that, that younger people have some valid things to say and um, should be given um, an opportunity to, sh- to share their voices. Um, I think we should all listen to each other. Yes, I agree with you. Well, you've been a joy. I thank you so much for taking the time. Are you going to be uh, performing tonight? Oh, definitely. Thank you for having me. Oh, I hope you should. Maybe next week. Um, I won't be on the show next week, on the call next week, because I have a conference to do and uh, mm-hmm. a focus group to run. But um, I hope you check in with us, like, on Wednesdays from 8 to 9.30. And, oh, sure. And stay I'll in the mix. You. Yeah, we, we need the young voices like yours. We really do, and thank you so much again for showing up. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a lovely day. You too. Good show tonight, I hope. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye.